Today we're going to see how 0.3 millimeters can make all the difference in how your braking system works. Hello and welcome back to the garage. With the master cylinder removed, today we are going to make two very special adjustments while reinstalling the master cylinder. These are incredibly important because if they're not done, you can run into some very serious problems. So the two adjustments we're gonna be looking at is there's a rod right here, which needs adjusting, and it pushes uh, from the brake booster or through the brake booster to the master cylinder. And secondly, under this cover over here, there's a free play adjustment. So I've removed the cover already and there's a free play adjustment for the brake pedal itself. So let's head on over to the workbench and see what's involved in setting this up. Here on the workbench, we have the factory service manual and we actually have two master cylinders. Now the eagle-eyed viewers of you will have noticed in our previous video that when we removed the master cylinder, this is the one that we took out and that happens to be the new one. And this is the original master cylinder. I purchased a new master cylinder from Superformance in the UK. It's an excellent unit, it's almost identical to the original one. And after looking into the costs for rebuilding this one and the timelines associated with it, it was significantly higher. So I decided to leave the original one on the shelf, keep it with the car, but put a brand new master cylinder in, which I was able to have in a couple of days from ordering. Now, in the manual, it talks about a measurement, a critical measurement, and it's outlined over here, but we'll look at it on the car as well. And that is there's a plunger that goes through the brake booster and presses on the master cylinder. And there's a clearance which is required a, of 0.3 millimeters. And if you don't get that clearance correct, what ends up happening is, is as the braking system builds up a little bit of temperature, everything expands and then the brakes will engage themselves on the road. And that's actually what happened to me. I installed this master cylinder. Everything went in perfect, did a very short test drive, no issues at all. And then when I decided to go on a slightly longer drive after about 10 or 15 minutes, I ran into a situation where the brakes started tightening up by themselves. And I had to uh, stop at the side of the road and be towed home. And now we're in the procedure of, of correcting that by, by setting this distance. It's a mistake that I made and that's why I'm sharing it here. I'm hoping that you guys don't make the same mistake as well. And I'm going to show you exactly what is involved in setting that distance. So if we look at the, the shop manual over here, the shop manual is a little bit vague. It talks about the importance of free pedal clearance, which is something that we are going to demonstrate on the car, which is adjusted through the turnbuckles, which I showed a moment ago. But the actual adjustment of the free play is something that they don't get into at all. And unless you get your math right, uh, there's no direct way of measuring it, so you need to approach it in a fashion where you take a bunch of measurements, subtract from one another. And we're going to go over all of that, and we'll start off by looking at the measurements on the master cylinder. So here we are with the two master cylinders, and I've already done a bunch of measurements, and I'll show you the, the critical places where we measure from. So looking at the new master cylinder, what I did was I measured from this face here, and this is the face that contacts the brake booster right out to the outside of this tube over here, which is the plunger that activates the master cylinder. I did the same thing on the original one and I found the dimensions to be identical. I also found that the measurements from the outside here to this face on both were absolutely identical. Where I did find a variance is I found a variance in the depth. If you take a look here, I'm gonna put this in and this depth here was actually different than this depth over here. And that was one of the differences. Now, all the master cylinders you'll buy, even if you had an original one, unless you were putting the same one back in, you might find a little variance here and there. So you need to actually set, uh, set this adjustment, which is again, what I didn't do and it caused, caused me difficulties on the road. So what you wanna do is you'll wanna use you know, a vernier caliper and then you put it inside you measure the depth record that number 
use this number merely as a reference as it, it might be different on your master cylinder. And then what I did was using just a set square where I have a little bit more control, I measured this distance over here and that's being the larger number. So I subtracted the larger number from the smaller number and that gives me the distance from this face over to the inside of this tube, wherever it stops. So now let's go to the car and look at the measurements we need to take there. Now we're on to the second measurement that you're gonna take at the brake booster. So as you can see, this face over here is where the master cylinder bolts do. And this tip here is the one that pushes on the master cylinder from the inside of that rod that we measured earlier. So what we need to do is we need to measure across this face here and what the depth changes. Now to achieve that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a straight edge and the straight edge will be put on right here. I can just get it in there. There we go. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna come again with the vernier calipers and I'm gonna set a depth measurement. And the actual measurement I'll take off of camera and with everything squared up properly. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure from the tip here out to the outside of the ruler. And then using that measurement, I'll subtract the width of the ruler and that'll give me the depth from the edge of the ruler here to the bottom or to the tip of this plunger. Having gotten all the measurements on the car and on the master cylinder, let's see how this math all works out. So if we go over here, I wrote down my numbers. Now again, these are my numbers. Your numbers will vary. We'll use these merely for the purpose of calculating the math. So on mine, the original distance from here to here was 60.56 millimeters. The depth measurement was 55.96. Subtract the two of them and we end up with a distance of 4.6 millimeters from this face here to where this plunger is, um, is solid on the inside, is no longer hollow. On the brake booster, I measured a distance of 5.32 millimeters. So that means that the distance from here to where the tip of the plunger is, is 5.32 millimeters. If you subtract 5.32 from 4.6, this car was assembled with a clearance of 0.7 millimeters. Now this also makes sense because although my service book shows 0.3 millimeters, some of the later service books show 0.7 millimeters. So the important thing to realize here is that we require a gap. Even if you went to one millimeter, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. The problem is when you have no gap, and there's no room for expansion in the system. So again, 0.3 millimeters, 0.7 millimeters were totally okay. So now let's look at the new master cylinder. On the new master cylinder is the same distance because we've already said that the distance from here to here is the same, but we know that the distance in here is a little bit different. So subtracting one from the other, we end up with 5.5 millimeters. And if we grab the 5.5 millimeters, and remember the original one, the difference was 4.6. Here's where we go back to grade school math, 5.5 minus 4.6. The new one has a difference of 0.9 millimeters of depth, which means then that if we look at the original brake booster number of 5.32 millimeters, we add to it the 0.9 that we measured our new target distance, the, the distance from the face of the brake booster to that tip of that pushing rod in order to maintain 0.7 millimeters of clearance would be 6.22 millimeters. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we actually change the length of that rod. Here we are back at the car. Hopefully the original measurements haven't thrown you for too much of a loop but it's all pretty simple and it's all very, very logical. Now, if we go back to the car here, as we can see, the distance from this face to that tip needs to be changed. It actually needs to be shortened a little bit. Now, the manual isn't very, very clear on this 
and it would have you think that the adjustment is done over here, but that's actually for the free play of the brake pedal, which is a separate adjustment. To actually move this over here, what you do is you go in, my fingers are just going to block the camera for a second, but I'm just going to just pull that out with my fingers, not in tight at all. And if you just yank on a little bit more, there's just a rubber trim piece. And you end up with, this is the plunger that controls the, the actuation of the master cylinder. So as you can see, it just has a face that gets pushed on by the brake booster. And then this is the tip that pushes against the, the rod on the master cylinder. So if we measure the full length of this, and we know that the, this rod needs to be moved in, so it needs to be shortened by 0.9 millimeters, which is the difference between the new master cylinder and the old one, all we have to do is measure this, and then, as you can see, that nut will screw into here, and we remeasure it, and we get a, a number which has to be 0.9 millimeters shorter. Once that's done, we will put this plunger back into the brake booster and we will double check all of our measurements before installing the master cylinder itself. I've now adjusted the correct distance over here between the front of the booster and the rod that actuates the master cylinder. I'm just gonna pull it out for a second just to point out that from factory, they put um, a strong Loctite uh, locking agent on here. And it actually, in order to be able to adjust it, requires heat. So what I had to do is I had to heat this entire assembly up a little bit to soften the, uh, the locking agent. Grab this with a pair of serrated pliers and with an 8 millimeter wrench, loosen this off. And what I did was I loosened the entire thing off, cleaned the threads, put fresh red Loctite on it, tightened it down, and there's a drying time for it, so it gave me time to make length adjustments. But as it turned out, by going off of the overall length adjustment the way I previously mentioned, I was able to install it without any difficulties. So with that done, before the master cylinder gets reinstalled, what we're going to look at is we're gonna look at the free play on the brake pedal. So let's work our way around. Glamour shot of the badge. And then have a look. Under the cover here is the assembly. That is the brake pedal that goes through a pivot assembly, which changes the direction, eventually pushes the rod that actuates the master cylinder. Now in here, there is a, there is a free play adjustment. So if we actuate a little bit there, that is free play. And the thing is, if you look at it while that's being actuated, and even if you put your finger on the end of the rod, there's absolutely zero movement there. So the free play is completely independent of the movement on the master cylinder. Now we're gonna adjust the free play, and then once the free play is adjusted, we will double check this just to make sure that nothing happened because it'll be our last opportunity to check that measurement over here at the master cylinder before it gets reinstalled. So coming back to this assembly here, in order to adjust this, there is a central nut, which is a 13 millimeter wrench, and it's flanked on either side by 17 millimeter nuts. So holding the center one with a 13 millimeter wrench, this nut here, the ones connected to the pedal, is, uh, is a left-hand thread nut, so the opposite of lefty loosey righty tighty And this one here is a standard nut, so you back both of them off, and by screwing this, you can actually change the length and the free play a little bit. How do you measure the free play? The free play is measured at the brake pedal, and we'll have a look at it in just a second. With the brake pedal now adjusted, we can just confirm down here in the pedal box the free play. So just by pushing it with your hand, you can easily feel the free play on the system. And if you really want to confirm it, you can do it using tape measure, just run a tape measure up to the back carpet, place it underneath here, and then moving the pedal, you can measure. The measured amount should be between uh, 0.8 and 1 centimeter. So that's the free play you should have in the pedal. Now we have everything reassembled. The master cylinder has been put back in. 
with the reservoir bottle, covered everything up and just double checked the free play on the brake system. Now you'll notice that the main hoses coming off of the master cylinder have not been reconnected. And that is because in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the procedure of bench bleeding the master cylinder. So thank you very much for visiting. Again, please like, subscribe, and join us in the next video.